ever wondered how to analyze structures? There are mainly two types of structures, determinate and indeterminate structures. Determinate structures are the ones that can be analyzed using three equilibrium equations. Examples include simply supported beams, frames, and trusses. Indeterminate structures, on the other hand, cannot be solved using available equilibrium equations. We need more complex methods to analyze them. Most real-life structures are indeterminate structures. It means they have more members than needed. In this lecture, you will learn determinate and indeterminate structures. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy, and examine life. Key components in any design are three. And there are main three steps. One is loading, other structure analysis, and third one is design, where we work out this utilization ratio, where you say that applied versus capacity should be less than or equal to one. So before we carry out any design, structure analysis is compulsory. And by structure analysis, I mean that we work out the member forces. Member forces means that we work out bending moments, axial forces, so that we can design a member. And utilization ratio or design in itself means that you compare applied versus the resistance. Now, I would like to start with the forces in mind. I would like to give you a brief overview of the reactions. Now, every action in this world has got some kind of reaction and all the forces most of the time needs to be transferred to the ground. If you talk about human body, if a person is standing, then all the force, if I'm standing somewhere, I weigh about 75 kg, my force, my weight is going to be transferred to the ground. And on my each foot, it would be half and half, half of 75, which would be 37.5 kilogram. And same is the case with stools. We have three legged stool and we have four legged stool. I will tell you the key difference in terms of design. How do we think in terms of practicality, in terms of design ideas, not just the numbers, but we have to think about situations. We have to think about the transferable skills, the skills that we develop here. How can it transfer to other parts of the engineering discipline? So first three legged stool. It is statically determinate. First of all, statically determinate and indeterminate. If anything can be solved using three equilibrium equations, which are summation of vertical forces equal to zero, summation of horizontal forces equal to zero, and summation of moments equal to zero. If we can solve any structure with the help of these three equations, then we say that it is statically determinate, which means that number of unknowns are equal to number of equilibrium equations. If unknowns are equal to equilibrium equations, then we say that it is a determinate structure. It can be solved using three equilibrium equations. But how about if the number of unknowns is not equal to equilibrium equations, then what happens? We will see in a minute then what happens. So one solution is that axial force in each leg. Why? There are three unknowns because it has got three legs. There are three equilibrium equations. So unknowns and equilibrium equations are equal. It means it is statically determinate. Uneven flow will not have any effect in this because load is going to be distributed equally among all legs. Four leg stool is statically indeterminate. The reason is that it has got four unknowns, means four reactions in legs, if somebody is sitting on that. And our equilibrium equations are three which means that unknowns are now greater than equilibrium equations, which means this is statically indeterminate structures and I cannot solve it using ordinary methods. I need some specialized methods to solve this problem. Another point to note here is that a four-legged stool on uneven floor, it will rock back and forth. And four unknowns, which means that it is indeterminate. And infinite solutions exist and forces in each leg will constantly change if there's uneven flow. Now, the key thing here is three leg stool is statically determinate because it's got three reactions and three equilibrium equations. Four leg stool is statically indeterminate structure because it has got more unknowns than equilibrium equations. Now, how about if I had kind of two leg stool, will it be stable? No, the two leg stool is not going to be stable because unknowns are less than number of equilibrium equations. A three-leg stool designed for a person weighing 90 kg. 90 kg is applied. It is divided equally among three legs. 
So 30 kg per leg, regardless of uneven flow. Even if the flow is uneven, that will still take 30, 30 kg. Now, how about four leg stools? 90 kg person, 22.5 kg per leg. But what if the floor is uneven? So what about if one leg does not touch the floor? What it will, will be unbalanced. It will be unbalanced. There will be instability. There will be instability. instability. And also, if the floor is uneven, it means that the stool at the moment is just resting on two legs, isn't it? Because other two legs are rocking back and forth. This means that if one leg doesn't touch the floor, the force in it is zero. So if one leg is zero, then the opposite leg is also zero by moment equilibrium. So which means that you have to design each leg for 45 kg. And this is really very important. We just don't design the things in isolation. We just have to see that they will be built in reality. So uneven floor has got lots of effect on this kind of a structure. So does that mean for um, for it to be fully effective, it would need to be like a, a level floor? Yes, for it to be fully effective, it has to be level floor, but that's not reality. In reality, you can have uneven flow. In the case, if we have got uneven flow, then what do we do? It will fail. Then what we do is that we design each leg for 45 kg. It means that now we're assuming the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is that two legs will rock back and forth, which means that the load is only going to be taken on remaining two legs, which means 45, 45 kg, which alternatively means that each leg has to be designed for 45 kg. The other legs have to be designed for 45 kg as well. This was a typical starter, and then I will go to the main course. Now the support conditions. We have a roller support for which we only have vertical reaction. We have a pin support for which we have horizontal and vertical reactions, and we have fixed support for which we have horizontal, vertical, and moment. These are used in modeling. In reality, there's nothing like fully pinned, there's nothing like fully fixed, and there's nothing like fully roller. So we idealize these things from real life. So for example, in steel beams, if the gap is left between the beam and column, then it will rotate. So in that case, we say that it is pinned at the ends, but we idealize it like this. We say that, okay, this is one side roller and other side hinge. So that's why we use that. I mean, certainly in buildings, we do not use any roller at all. We just idealize it that it will behave like that. This is some research that we did at Warwick University on FRP composite. The shapes, they actually resemble steel structure. So this is a beam and this is the column and there is a pin joint at the end over here. A pin joint means that it has got web cleats bolted to the beam and then connected to the column. And here you can see that this is how it looks like. The structure actually resembles the steel structure, but the behavior is obviously slightly different. But in terms of joints, we can say that the joint behavior is going to be the same as you would have it in the steel structures. So leg angles, they are bolted to the beam. And then these leg angles, they are bolted to the flange of the column. This is a series of pictures that we took. Now, one thing you can observe is that there is a gap between end of the beam and the column. So this ensures that the joint is a pin joint. A pin joint will always rotate. So that is the essential criteria for pin joint. It will always rotate. So rotation is allowed. That is why it doesn't take moment. If it is fully attached, then if you are attaching a lot of components here at the top, at the bottom, and then that would be rigid joint but because it will not allow rotation. Now, applying the load, you can see it failed. These are the failure patterns. This is looking down from here. You can see that these web cleats, they failed because fiber reinforced polymer, it's got glass fibers and resin inside. And this is the cracking pattern. This is the interesting thing that I wanted to show you, moment rotation behavior. And we really measured it precisely. And here you can see that the damage started at one kilonewton meter, and then it failed at 1.8 something. Now you can see that the moment capacity of the joint itself isn't much as compared to the moment capacity of the beam. The moment capacity of the beam was significantly higher, I think 400 kilonewton meter. If you compare it with 400 kilonewton meter, 1.8 kilonewton meter is actually negligible. So that's why we say that joints moment capacity is zero. They cannot take any moment. All right, so we are on the safer side. So it's a safer assumption. Remember that in the structure analysis, we always model the things from real life and we take the assumptions. It's not complete reality, but this is the safest assumption. 
it is the safest approximation. What does it mean by framed structures? They are structures which are load bearing structures, which means that all the load is transferred through walls. The typical example is houses in the UK. In houses, the load from the timber slab is taken to the walls and then from walls to the foundations. What about frame structures? In frame structure is a kind of a skeleton structure where load is transferred from slab to beams and beams to columns. So we do not actually need walls or floors to resist the loading. The frame itself is enough to take the loading. And these are typical examples of framed structures in steel and in reinforced concrete. Framed structures can be statically determinate. Statically indeterminate structures, on the other hand, or redundant structures, they cannot be analyzed using equations of equilibrium. And we need specialized methods to analyze them. And there are three equilibrium equations, summation of fx equal to zero, summation of fy equal to zero, and summation of moment equal to zero. If we are working in two-dimensional modeling plane, if we are working in three dimensions, then these equations are going to be modified. They will not remain three. If we are working in three-dimensional space, examples are given here, then we will have six equilibrium equations rather than three because forces in all directions, x, y, and z, are zero and moments in all directions, x, y, and z, are zero. And this is very important to understand when you are preparing a three-dimensional model and when you are preparing a finite element model in any kind of software. What, what do you mean, so that, that the moments are equal to zero? What does that, what does that mean in context? This is in context of equilibrium. Summation of all forces in a structure should be equal to zero. If a structure is in equilibrium, if it is two dimensional structure, summation of horizontal forces, summation of vertical forces, and summation of moment should be equal to zero for that particular structure. Okay. okay. If I'm using a software or if I'm using hand calculations to do it in two dimensional plane, if I'm working in three dimensional plane, then I will have six equilibrium equations. It means that these six forces have to be zero for it to be in equilibrium. Thanks for watching this lecture today. Click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture. Click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics.